Hi everyone, I'm Jeremy Reeves, head blender of Cornell & Deal Pipe Tobacco Company. And uh, today I wanted to do a little bit of a demonstration of the way that a blend can come together. Uh, those of you that are home blenders, they like to use our blending components, which we sell uh, and make your, own, make your own concoctions and blends. That's a thing that I enjoy doing at home. Um, but I wanted to share a little bit of sort of the methodology that I use in terms of actually blending um, and also talk a bit about ways that certain components can be used in a blend that, that you want to do. So for the purposes of this, I've come up with a brand new blend. This isn't a product that we actually make anywhere. Um, it's just something that I was interested to mess around with. Uh, I'm starting with a base of Cube Cut White Burley. Um, Cube Cut Burley is uh, a, a burly component. We've, we've got another video that kind of breaks down the, the nitty gritty details of what makes burly burly and the kinds of flavor profiles that it can offer in a blend. But cube cut is essentially a process by which you take a leaf white burly and press it uh, similar to the way that you would make a cake uh, for flake. And then after it is done in the press, you cut it into flakes and then you take those flakes and run it through the cutter again lengthwise so that the flakes are cut into little tiny cubes. Um, it gives you sort of a granular texture to the tobacco and basically gives you small compressed uh, tobaccos that uh, will slowly burn in the bowl. So it gives you whatever flavor that that tobacco uh, in, in parts to a blend, it gives you sort of a slow burning constant uh, impartation of that flavor. So in this case, it, it would be a burly flavor. It's just going to be a slow, a slow burning burly component. I'm starting with 50% of my mixture as the base of this blend. That's cube cup burly. When I add it to my container that I'm going to use to blend it in, I want to just get it into as smooth and even and flat a layer as possible. And then I'm going to build all of my other components on top of it similarly. So kind of think like a layer cake. At the end, it's going to be easier to get a quick integration and even mixture of all of the components that we've added. If you start with the, the largest volume on the bottom and you work your way smaller and smaller. So again, this is 50% of my mixture is cube cut burly, and this is the same cube cut that we sell in bulk. The next thing that I'm adding, because burley has no sugar to speak of, um, it's got a really nice mellow sort of chocolatey flavor, but it's not sweet and there's a, a fair amount of nicotine in it, but it's a very, very dense and very strong and can be kind of stringent sort of flavor. So to balance that and to add some sweetness and to add a little bit of citrus note, I'm using Canadian Bright Virginia. Again, this is the same Bright Virginia component that we sell in bulk as a blending Virginia. Uh, this is 22% of my mixture and I'm, I'm making a pound here. So I'm going to add that again in a even flat layer on top of my base. And get that out of the way so that I can really arrange this. I'm starting with components that are dry because I'm going to add moisture at the end. The reason for that is so that I don't have the problem of individual ribbons and pieces of tobacco sti sticking together and preventing a, a complete integration of the total product. So I get the most even mixture if I start working with dry components. But you have to be careful as you're handling these components since they're dry and crispy, you don't wanna crush them to dust. You want them to stay in, in their form of ribbon or cube or whatever the format is of, of the tobacco. So you have to be very gentle and even loose kind of pressure when you're, when you're handling this stuff. And when we go to blend later, I'll show you some of the ways that we get an even mixture without crushing the stuff. The next thing that I'm adding is Turkish tobacco. This is our Turkish ribbon. And this is an 18% of the total weight of the mixture. Again, I'm making one pound. Started with 50% cube cut burley, then 22% of the Bright Virginia, and now 18% of the pound is Turkish ribbon. 
Turkish has sort of a, a mellow, mild flavor, but it's very, very engaging to the olfactory senses. Um, it's lots of spice and lots of sort of effervescence, uh, and it actually will also work to add a little bit more sweetness to the blend, um, work really nicely with the citrusy notes of the Virginia, add a little bit of a tea and sort of herbal element to the mix. Um, and both, of, both the Turkish and the Virginia are also acting as a foil to the strength and relative incomplexity that the Burley has to offer. The last thing that I'm going to add is uh, pure St. James Parish Perique. Uh, this is from our, our farm partner in uh, St. James Parish, Louisiana, 31 Farms. And I'm adding this in a 10% volume to the total one pound mixture. So again, each of these in a nice even layer, one on top of the other, like a layer cake. And that's, that's my total tobacco mixture. So, so that I don't crush all of this to dust and so that I can make sure that everything in the form that it has been cut into remains in that form uh, to give me the burning, the burning characteristics that each cut can give. I'm going to put my knuckles straight on the bottom of my blending surface and I'm going to slowly use my fingers to work my way gently underneath the pile of tobacco and then begin raising them and moving my fingers back and forth. Think like jazz hands and spirit fingers. That's basically what's going on here. You can hear the rustling and then just bringing it up to the top. I'm really just coaxing these different tobaccos together. I know the different colors of each component, and I'm kind of looking towards the center of the tobacco that's piling up in my fingers as I raise it up and think like the way that a kaleidoscope takes different colors and blends them together in an even proportion, an even mixture into a sort of a psychedelic shape or pattern. That's the, that's the kind of way that I use to tell me that I've got a nice even mixture. I'm looking for the dark kind of black, almost, almost dark brown black color of the Perique. And I'm looking for the olive tones of the Oriental and I'm looking for the bright color of the Bright Virginia. And I'm looking for sort of the tan or, or taupe colors of the Burley, all in an even mixture, kind of in the middle of what I'm bringing up with my fingers. And piling them that way makes this happen pretty quickly so that I'm not handling the tobacco so much that I risk stressing it and creating too much, too much dust. Occasionally, even with dry components, you'll end up with uh, some pieces that kind of want to stick together. And in those instances, I just kind of find them and gently break them apart without tearing or ripping anything. It's all about being gentle, being patient, and really kind of paying attention to all of your senses so that you can enjoy how these different smells, how these different colors, and how the impression that you can get of the flavors that each one of them have are going to come together in your finished product. Now, th this isn't a blend that uh, I've been spending too much time with yet. This is, <coughs> excuse me, this is really the first time that I've actually put it together. So I may make some changes to the overall proportions that I'm using here. These are just my starting points based on what I know about the components from smoking them straight and kind of the, the image that I have in my mind, if you will, of how I want them to taste. So maybe we can make a, a video in the future where I've done some tweaking to, to the recipe and, uh, and see what sort of changes I made and why. And any of you who have these components at home or who want to take part in this, uh, feel free to uh, use those components and put together this exact same mixture yourself. If you're doing that or any time that you're blending at home, I recommend not making a pound of something that you haven't tried or don't know that that's what you want to do because you had to buy the quantities of tobacco to come together to make that pound. Instead, use a small scale. I've pre-weighed all these things and it's easier to see on camera if I make a larger quantity. But 
for home or any time that I'm, I'm uh, developing a blend for our production, I actually make really, really tiny uh, mixtures to start out, just enough to be able to smoke two or three pipefuls. Um, and then once I find something that I know I'm really happy with, that's when I make a larger quantity to make sure that it translates well to scaling up. And I'll make any adjustments as I go along the way, but I try and do that in small portions before I make you know, an eight pound block of something or you know, before we make a, a big production run of something. It's gone through all of these stages. So this is really well mixed. And now, I'm gonna gently arrange it back out into a, a flat layer. Make sure I don't see any clumps or piles of anything. A particular color that is all clumped together in one place. I see a little bit of perique that's still kind of sticking together in this one spot. But notice every Everything I'm doing here is light, gentle, almost you know timid. I don't want to. I don't want to hurt the tobacco. I want to gently coax it to where I want it to be and make it think it was its own idea. <laughs> now I'm adding a little bit of distilled water and about a quarter ounce of rum and a quarter ounce of anisette. I think that those flavors work really nicely with the uh, with the components that I've got here. I really like using rum, not so much because it adds a whole lot of flavor on its own, but because the alcohol can actually penetrate deep into all of these different leaf types and distill a little bit out of uh, the, oil, the oil content of each one and some of the flavor of each one and share it through the rest of the blend. So it actually works to really marry these things. After I add this, I'm going to let the mixture rest uh, for a period of time to sort of let the alcohol dissipate before I would consider smoking it so I don't end up with a, a hot blue flame in the bowl of my pipe, which would not be good for my tongue or my pipe. So adding this, really, really, really slowly, trying to be as even as possible. And some of you may want to uh, use like a spray bottle to do this. The one thing that you have to do is make sure that if you're going to use that one spray bottle for this sort of application, but you're gonna change what goes through it, you're gonna wanna clean that tube that goes into the bottle that actually feeds the sprayer really, really well. For that reason, rather than keeping a whole bunch of spray bottles around, I just kind of take this method. So pour everything gently and easily and, and uh, evenly across the face of the mixture. Let it sit for a couple of seconds. And then start mixing it back through. Because the tobacco is dry, it's going to soak this up really easily and it's going to spread that, that liquid from piece to piece really quickly. So even though every piece didn't get uh, the liquid on it, I can feel, even through my gloved hands, I can feel the coolness of that, that moisture moving its way pretty quickly through this mixture. And I can already begin to tell that as the moisture works its way through the mixture, that I can be a little less ginger with this tobacco. It feels less crispy to me. It's starting to get a little bit more lively and fluffy and kind of like the feeling of like peeling moss off of a log or something. There's a life to it. So as you, as you start noticing that there's some moisture in the tobacco, there's less risk that you're going to be able to crush it to dust. Now you can be a little more quick and a little less gentle. Still not squeezing anything yet. But after this sits for a few minutes and that moisture works the way through, then to be able to test and make sure that my moisture content is good, I'm going to do a squeeze test. And basically what that involves is uh, taking a, a handful of the tobacco, squeezing it in my hand as tight as I can, 
and then opening my hand and seeing if the tobacco slowly unfurls like a flower or if it stays in a bowl, which would mean that it is too wet, or if it just immediately falls back open, which would, would mean that it's a little too dry. So that's the next step here. Yeah, this is, I'm sure you can hear it. It's less, less noisy, less crinkly. Um, still finding a little dry spots in some areas. That just needs to sit and rest. I would recommend giving this, say, about 10 minutes to really let everything fully penetrate through and then do your moisture test. And then if you need to adjust it, uh, you can make a decision at that time whether you want to make that adjustment with distilled water or whether you make that adjustment with more of your rum or anisette or any other alcohol that you might be using. Uh, the alcohol will also help to, in the early stages, prevent mold spores from landing on your pile of tobacco while you've got it sitting out. There are mold spores in the air all around us all the time. We breathe thousands of them a day. And sometimes a mold spore lands on a spot where it can drink water and it will decide to start fruiting there. And tobacco is a perfect substrate for that. So using alcohol in the short term prevents that. In the long term, you may want to consider adding maybe about 10% of uh, vinegar to whatever sauce you're using. And that's a good way to be able to raise the pH level of the tobacco that you're blending at home uh, to a level that most molds will not be able to find a home. So in a nutshell, that's kind of how blending works, uh, the mechanics of it, and a little bit of how you can begin developing your own blends at home. Um, I definitely recommend whatever you're blending with, smoke your components straight so that you know what each one does, um, so that you can then begin to imagine how they can play together in a flavor profile. And also don't, don't take into account too lightly the way that they look together. Um, you know, if you have a, if you think about it from a diet, a dietary standpoint, uh, eating foods of many different colors is a good indication that you are getting lots of different kinds of nutri uh, nutrition. And the same sort of approach can be taken with tobacco. Tobaccos that all look the same may not be as enjoyable to smoke if for no other reason than it's not as enjoyable to look at, but also because many times those flavor profiles are going to be so similar that you're not gonna get a lot of complexity. If you've got a lot of different color variation in your blend, it's probably going to be something that's pretty enjoyable and complex. So. We'll, uh, we'll come back and revisit this in the future, but I hope this has been helpful to you guys. Have a good one.